Uh, let me introduce myself. I am uh, Karthik, uh, working as a senior WordPress engineer in Multidocs for the past uh, 10 years. Uh, I have a WordPress experience of about uh, 10 plus years. And uh, uh, saying that, uh, I have some knowledge of Gutenberg blocks, and uh, let me share with you today. So, <coughs> getting into the topic, introduction to Gutenberg custom blocks. So, what is Gutenberg block? So, Gutenberg block was uh, introduced in WordPress 5.0, and uh, at that time, uh, most of them were uh, uh, were not interested in Gutenberg uh, because it has some. Uh, there were many negative uh, negativity points that were uh, surrounded by Gutenberg, and most of them did not like the Gutenberg uh, Gutenberg editor of block. <coughs> So when days passed by, Gutenberg became very popular in WordPress, and uh, then uh, most of them, uh, most of the website developers and business uh, business owners were uh, interested in Gutenberg blocks, and then they were uh, uh, they were trying to build all of your uh, all of their web page using the Gutenberg blocks only. So Gutenberg blocks is uh, mainly uh, building block of a web page content. So imagine uh, there are many many blocks. In a, available in the Gutenberg by default, in WordPress by default. Some of them are text, images, galleries, videos, and may, many are available. And we can just uh, create some, our own custom Gutenberg block as well. And uh, the today's topic is mainly about the custom Gutenberg block only. So, uh, Gutenberg is just not on text, it is a a uh, series of every content that we need can be uh, incorporated into the Gutenberg blocks. So, coming to the next slide, what are all the benefits of Gutenberg blocks? Uh, unlike other uh, page builders like uh, Visual Composer, Elementor, it is free to use in uh, WordPress. It comes uh, available by default in WordPress. And uh, whoever likes to start WordPress, it is the Gutenberg block is very much user friendly or uh, beginner friendly and uh, uh, <coughs> if uh, someone wants to build a web page and he does not have any website knowledge or uh, coding knowledge, he can just come into this uh, WordPress backend and it will be very uh, uh, easy for him to navigate or make any setting. Everything is very very much uh, user friendly. And one more thing is that fast page loading. So. Uh, if you build any websites uh, using Visual Composer or uh, Elementor, there will be some page loading time based on the contents that we use. For example, if there is any images or uh, any uh, uh, contents that are loading dynamically, which is, fetches the data from APIs or from databases or from custom post type, there will be some uh, uh, page loading issues. And uh, Gutenberg has uh, uh, advantage of uh, uh, if you if any dynamic uh, uh, contents are also loading. The page loading will be very much fast in this Gutenberg blocks, and it is compatible for most of the themes that are uh, in the market. And uh, uh, editing experience. Editing experience is that you can just drag and drop the blocks from anywhere else from a section to other, another section. It is very much compatible for if, uh, anything for any web page content. This Gutenberg block is very much compatible. So, coming to the next slide, uh, what are all the types of Gutenberg blocks based on the contents? Contents, Gutenberg blocks can be classified into two types, static and dynamic. So, we have some categories inside the Gutenberg blocks <coughs> that is like common, widgets, that, that are all in the, based on the types. But based on the content, we have two main blocks, that is static block and dynamic blocks. So, static blocks are like... Uh, for example, shown in as shown here, paragraph, heading, list, code, code, details. These are all the static blocks and dynamic blocks are uh, post list, archives and latest post. So let me explain what are all the difference between these two, uh, static posts and dynamic post, dynamic blocks. So coming to the static blocks, uh, static blocks contents does not change. You can uh, just, uh, uh, if you need to show some static content from the Gutenberg editor itself. So it, it is, uh, it, it, is the, it does not have any content from any dynamic resource or da uh, database or from the API, something like that. It, if you want to uh, 
show some fixed content, you can just use the static blocks. And uh, unlike that, in dynamic blocks, you can just fetch the data from APIs and from custom post type. Uh, hope everyone is aware about custom post type. Custom post type is a clone of posts. WordPress have a post, default post, and a clone of post is called custom post type. Uh, we can just uh, customize it based on our needs. So uh, the contents are fixed in uh, static, and the, uh, it is uh, changeable in dynamic blocks. So dynamic blocks is uh, if uh, in dynamic blocks if there is any real time change in APIs. For example, if we are in a dynamic block, we are showing some data from a weather report. There is some data in weather report uh, using a block. So if there is any change in that weather condition, and this dynamic block will be incorporated such that that changes in the API will be automatically shown in this block. So dynamic, it will be the content will be automatically changing, but in the static, it is not like that. <coughs> and uh, they are suitable for uh, uh, external APIs. The dynamic blocks are suitable for external APIs and data sources uh, that we use in uh, external websites as well. So examples of uh, static and dynamic are, as I shown in the previous slide. Uh, in static, for static, we can take call to action block and uh, separate the uh, default blocks which are available in the WordPress mostly a static, except some of the blocks like latest post and uh, archives are uh, the dynamic posts. So, uh, in this session, I'm going to create a uh, static uh, Gutenberg block. So, I will show how to create a static Gutenberg block. Uh, in this session, let me cd is the change directory command. So now I am in the plugins folder, I have navigated to the plugins folder. So uh, basically for uh, creating any blocks, we need node installed in our system. So. I have already installed Node.js in my system. For installing Node, uh, you can just uh, Google Node.js uh, and install the latest version. From it's, uh, so you can just download the file and you can install it upon, depending upon your operating system. So now I have. Uh, I will get it out here. Let me check the node version which I have installed over in my system. So it is 14.19.3 but I need the latest version. So let me check what are all the available versions in my system which I have installed. So NVM and this NVM is node version manager. So I have the latest version 20.9.0. So I am going to use the latest version NVM use 20.9.0 now i am using the latest version 20.9.0 and the npm version is 10.4 it has automatically changed the npm version itself npm is the node package manager mm -hmm. so what are all the packages <coughs> that are needed for the uh, gutenberg blocks will be handled by the node package manager so now i am going to Add a tool which is called npx. Npx is for node package execute. Npx comes inside the npm itself. It is a tool inside the node package manager which is used to create a plugin with a, a static block in the in the name of a plugin. So let me show you. the command which is npx wordpress create block and custom block is the plugin and let me add custom block plugin this the custom block plugin is the plugin name which we are going to create and this command will automatically create a plugin and a static block in our system
so it will take a couple of minutes for installing this so up to this if you have any questions you can just stop me and ask uh, any, any questions if you have uh, the installation might take some few minutes So we have to create a uh, dynamic one. We have to give a command variant equal to yeah dynamic. dynamic. It will be uh, if uh, it is a static block, if uh, dynamic block, you can just uh, change it the variant equal to dynamic, and the files also will be changed according to that. Uh, if uh, uh, static block means there is no need of PHP file in it, so uh, this command uh, will does not will, will not add that. Uh, for example, uh, in dynamic log, we will have we will be having a render.php file, which is used to connect to the uh, custom post or API something like that. So uh, that file will be created when we give the variant equal to dynamic. So here if we have provided only static. So this handles the npx uh, command. is It is a tool in, uh, incorporated in the node package manager. This will be handling all types of uh, the static and dynamic blocks and the files that are needed. So, this will automatically uh, handle that. Okay. So, changing dynamic is enough to create a dynamic block. Okay, so the block.json is the file that where we actually have everything. Like block of? Block.json. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, let, uh, let me show you uh, once it is created, I will uh, show you everything. <coughs> So there is one more question. So for example, let's say we have to. Uh, um, so the render.php can be of you know integrated with any existing plugins as well. Yes. All of them will come in inside the. Uh, no, actually plugin. the basic thing will only be added in this uh, uh, in this command. Whatever changes that we need, for uh, example, if we need to show any. Uh, posts from the custom post types or anything, we need to add add, add the code based on our requirement. Yeah. It is for just example, a template like thing. Okay, for example, let's say in the, in the static block, I wanted to, let's say I'm adding a type key. And then if I have to set up a color, font size, uh, do we have to create a dynamic block for that? Or no, in static, static block itself, we can, uh, we, we can add the option for changing the colors, uh, font size, everything. It's a pro yeah. provided default plugin Gutenberg or we yeah, write the in, code? In static block, it, it, uh, the Gutenberg uh, provides it by default. Right. Yeah, default. If we want, we can add our own itself. We can also add more, yeah, on, more on options. Our... I will show you one option by adding uh, once it is done. I will create a static block. Uh, I will add a text box <coughs> and uh, a user input as well as uh, changing a background color for that. <coughs> okay. So now it is done. A small question, sir. Uh, why we are going to Node instead of uh, SQL? There, there may be SQL version, sir. Yeah. Why we are going to Node.js? Yeah, basically the Gutenberg blocks are built in React JS only. Okay. So if we want to run any React code, Node is the primary. <coughs> node is the one which is Node.js is the one which is needed for everything to run in, in our WordPress system itself. Okay, okay. okay so sure. Yeah. yeah. That's good. Now it has been created. Now let's check the back end if a plugin has been created or not. So the name which I provided in that uh, uh, command, it is uh, the same name. The plugin has been created. So now let's activate the plugin and I'm going to the pages, adding a new page. And let us check if that block is created or not. So clicking on this plus button, we can see all the available blocks in our uh, system. So custom block plugin, which we have created, is showing up here. So you can see over see this content. It is custom block plugin. Let's jump over to the file. So I'm using Visual Studio Code, which is a popular editor. 
and we add that particular folder which a particular WordPress which I have created for this custom block custom block new This is the plugin that we have created. So you can see what are all the files that the npx <coughs> tool which has created in our local system. So we have a folder called build, src and node modules. In Inside the node modules you can see all the available modules which are created over here. So we did not add anything, just the command we run has created all these folders. So the block which is showing in the backend is showing from this build folder only. You need to understand build folder. I will show, uh, let you know what uh, how this build folder is uh, being uh, updated. So <coughs> we, uh, we will be doing the changes only in the SRC folder. SRC folder has some files called uh, uh, block.json, edit.js, scss, so, index.js, save.js. So, this file contains all the uh, data that we incorporate for that particular block. For example, the name, this is the name of the block that we have created. Create block is the create block and custom block plugin is only the name of the block that we have created. Uh, title can be anything we can provide. So I have provided the title custom block plugin. This is the category widgets. So the block that we have seen will be in the widgets category. You can see back end over here it is coming from the save.js file okay. over here. You can see the same content over here. So now let's make something more interactive like uh, the edit function, this is the edit function which uh, which is uh, uh, responsible for all the edit uh, backend related functionalities. So let me check the, what are all the properties available over here. The props is the parameter which edit accepts over here. So let's check what are all the props that are available over here. So I'm consoling the edit props uh, and in the back end let us check Compact. in the inspect element. Compact. Yeah, so so one more thing we need to do is that. Uh, I, I have already told you that uh, in the uh, the code needs to be uh, code is uh, in the build, uh, backend is showing from the build folder. So now what we need to do, but we have changed the code in the SRC folder. Mm -hmm. Now uh, uh, in the build folder there is no changes. Only we have changed in the SRC folder. So how the changes that we do in the SRC folder should be go, uh, how it will be going to the build folder? We need some compilation process. Why? Mm -hmm. What is the use of compilation process is that the codes which we have written over here in edit.js is the ES6 code, ECMAScript 6 code, a 6 version. But all, all of our browsers does not uh, understand this uh, 6 version. It understands only the basic 5 version. So uh, we have written in 6 version how to convert into the 5 version so that the browser accepts, uh, understands the code. So we need some compilation process which converts the uh, 6 version to 5 version. So, we need some compilation and it is, we have uh, added some packages and methods in the package.json file in which we have written the, uh, this is the main file uh, from which the build uh, folder is running. So, here are all, here is the scripts that are uh, mentioned for which we can uh, build and start. Uh, build is the command which is uh, uh, used to convert the uh, in, in, uh, ES version, uh, ExmaScript 6 version to 5. So, in by in WordPress default, there is a 
compiler which is incorporated in it. So we can now we need to run the npm build command. npm run build. You should be in the folder. Like in the yeah, sorry, I need to navigate to that particular mm -hmm. folder because uh, in that only we have the node modules files. Now I'm running the npm run build. So now it has built the now the changes that we have done in the SRC folder has been moved to the build folder. So let me check the console.log that we have added. See the console.log that we have added now it is showing over here. So attributes and set attributes are the main properties that is needed for uh, some uh, uh, data handling in the custom blocks. So now every time if we do some changes we need to go and uh, you can ask some uh, question like uh, if every time if I do some changes I come uh, I need to come to this uh, command line and uh, command interface and uh, uh, run the npm run build and it, it will be very difficult for us uh, to every time do, do that. Uh, if uh, I am doing a small change, I need to come to this uh, command interface and do the changes. So to avoid that, we can uh, write npm start. This will automatically uh, compile the changes, whatever we do in the SRC folder to the build folder. So now you can see, uh, now I am going to do some changes and it will be automatically compiled. Uh, now let's go to the uh, block.json in which we will be adding the attributes. Attributes are the most important thing in the Gutenberg blocks in which the, uh, the data handling will be mostly uh, taking place in the attributes. Add one attributes. So we have uh, created one attribute, for example, <coughs> if we need to have some uh, name, email, address, a phone number, anything, we need to create a separate attribute for each of the uh, fields that we are going to use in our button work block. So now I have uh, added a title attribute only and by default, let me add a value hello world in this. And as we have seen, the attributes which are uh, uh, available in the console log, we, we have seen this uh, properties which are available in the props. We can just add it uh, over here like attributes and let me paste the title which I have added in the block.json in the so that uh, block.json attribute value will be available in this section. So now let's try to print the 
the type 2, type 3 app and directly in the block.json. So now we do not need to automatically saving our changes and there was some error that's why the compilation has been stopped now it has been started again now let's check if these changes that we have done props is not defined props in the bracket yeah sorry that is the console log sorry Yeah, sorry, the uh, edit option should be in the, in the property. Yeah, it is an object, so we need to add a, the attributes in the curly braces. Now, I think the hello world which we have added in the block.json default value, now it has been loading in the backend. So you can see the hello world is printed over here, but if uh, if we it, it could uh, it has been not saved if you load the front end it will be not say uh, change because we have not made any change in the save.js file mm -hmm. so the same changes we need to apply to the save.js file as well so let's add the attributes in the save.js as well the gutenberg editor itself now I am going to the editor.js for uh, including the uh, rich text box we need to import some components from the wordpress block editor. So there are some components available. So rich text is a component which is available in the wordpress uh, block editor. So we need to import that rich text first. And we will add that and we need to specify the tag name for the rich text for in which uh, for example if we provide the paragraph tag the rich text will be uh, surrounded by the paragraph mm -hmm. tag in the backend okay. and we need to provide a value for that let, let me add as a title So I will just uh, I will just leave this uh, default uh, hello world in the block.json file. I am adding this rich text over here. And do we have to copy this to the save.json? Yes, but uh, there is a small change. Uh, I, uh, once I am going to the save.js, I will show you that. So let us check if the rich text is uh, uh, showing up here. You can see now the hello world is editable. Mm. You can see. So now uh, previously it was not editable because it was directly from the block.json file. Now it is editable. So now uh, if we do some changes, it needs to be saved over here in the edit dot uh, editor uh, uh, section and uh, edit page. And then uh, for that we need to add a small on change event in this <coughs> on change
So, what this does is that uh, we have already seen the set attributes as well. So, we need to uh, fetch the pro uh, properties of the title from the uh, if there is any change that is uh, in the backend, we are going to do some changes in the title. So, that change needs to be updated as well. So, we are using the set attribute for updating the title. So, on change of title, there is an arrow function. Using the set attributes, we are setting the title over here. So, now let's check in the backend. That is hello world. And ID testing and see if, the, if it is saving or not. It has saved and we are pressing it again. So, the ones which we have updated has been saved right now. But in the front end, it will not be doing any changes. Yeah, it is, uh, it has already, uh, why it is showing is that we already have the title in the mm -hmm. save.js. Okay. So, it is already saving the content from the uh, back end to the front end. So, the same rich text. Uh, can be moved to the save.js like this rich text of content and the value can be title So we have made some changes. So we need to add import the rich text in the block editor. So that's why there is an error. So since we have uh, made some changes in the uh, save.js file, again the block has broken. Now I am clicking attempt block recovery. And updating it again. Let me do some changes again and updating it. And let's check the front end. So now there is a, a text box in the backend, whatever content that we add in the backend, now it is showing up in the front end. Now let's try to add a background color to this blue color. We uh, Let's try to add some background color. For that we need to add some. Uh, some more components in, into the uh, WordPress editor. So uh, let's in, uh, in add the inspector control <coughs> and panel color 
of things. And one more thing we need to import is the panel body. Panel body is uh, nothing but grouping the options that we are showing and uh, going to make in the diagram round out here. One minute. Yeah. So we need to import the panel body from the components, WordPress components, because the panel body is available only in the WordPress uh, components only. So let's try to add the inspector control. So there is an error over here. Let's check what it is. So that might that should be a parent uh, element which should cover all the content. That's why we have an error. So let's add a parent div over here. So now I am adding a parent color settings. Let me check the syntax for that. Sometimes uh, I might uh, forget the syntax. Uh, we will just use this inspector controls which I have already built over here. So panel body if we want which uh, we can have many color settings. Uh, for now, we have added the background only for the title. For example, if we have many fields like title, email, phone, everything, for each of the thing, we can uh, add some background color or uh, color features like that. So panel body is used to group all of the uh, settings that we are adding in the right side panel. So now we have added the inspector control which we have already imported over here, the panel color settings and the panel body. Now in the panel color settings, we have an option called color setting in which we are going to add the uh, background color for the title. So that should be another attribute. So background color is another field that we are going to introduce into the block. So we will be uh, adding this title, I have added a title bg over here, the title bg should be added as an attribute again in the block.json file. So I am adding this title bg over here and the default can be empty and the type is string. Now the title bg uh, the color settings value is going to be the title bg on on change uh, there will be when uh, that if you change some color there will be a new color in that uh, color panel so that value should be also updated so we are going to add a new color over there and the set attributes will be setting the value of title bg to the new color okay so this thing all done but we now we need to uh, update the background color where the editor, uh, so this one should be edited. By default, what we will be doing, uh, we will be going to the inspect element and add a style 
for that uh, like this we'll be adding like this and background color red something like this we'll be adding so same thing we will be going to do in the in this code as well so, first we will initialize time title to an empty object now a new variable which is style title and uh, assigned it to an empty object so now if title bg is not empty Style dot title is put to style dot so I am now setting the background color of the style title using the title PG. Now I am adding this in the see the settings you will just need to click on that particular block so you can see the color settings that we have created has been showing in the right side and the title color which we have mentioned in the label yeah. so you can see the panel body is the one which is showing up over here so you can group uh, many of the titles like a background color of title or uh, any of the fields that we are yeah. going to add so I am trying to color over here So, uh, background color that we have uh, added in the backend, now it is reflecting in the editor, now updating it, it will be not changing, since we have not changed any code in the save.js, so now let's do the changes in the save.js as well, we need to add So now it is done. The save.js, uh, we do not need to import uh, all of the inspector controls because inspector control is uh, only in the back end and not in the front end. So we can just only use the uh, variables that uh, the properties that are needed in the front end. So we can just use only the uh, uh, main uh, properties that are needed for the front end. So I have just added the style which is uh, added in the uh, attributes I am using in the front end save.js. Now the color which is changed in the back end is now reflecting in the front end. I am updating over here and it is reflecting the front end. So that's it with the 
static blocks and uh, let me show you some of the static blocks which I have created in my projects and uh, so these are all the static blocks which we have uh, I have created in my project so let me open up here you can see this is one of the card uh, static block in which you can uh, add the uh, switch on and off the mm -hmm. uh, ribbon over here you can add the title you can add an image custom image over here see you can add it you can add the heading let me show you one demo page as well in that which is already added and you can add the button name if you need to add a new card just click on this plus button and you can add uh, as many as uh, buttons mm -hmm. as many as cards that is needed so if you need to remove it just click on this and you can just remove this card if you want to move it to the right you can just move it like this to left you can mm -hmm. move it like this remove you can remove it like this and each of the cards have a separate settings like this if you want to uh, enable and dis disable, see the description at the top you can see over here can be switched on and off. The heading can be switched on and off. If you need to turn on, on and off the buttons, you can do it like this. And uh, for the whole um, card section, if you need to show a background color, background image, you can just uh, select a background image and it will be showing like this. So one of you can just uh, make these changes uh, you can incorporate into the custom blocks so that's it with my presentation today uh, if uh, any of them have any questions you can just ask them. So one question is like uh, for dynamic block like there won't be any page render right? like page low 